Hi everyone, some people requested a follow-up video on my first fast HTML video because I integrated it with Langchain and some people wanted to know how you can do that with data streaming. It's actually not that easy, so if you want to do it in a high level and easy way, you may look at Streamlit or another high level framework for that. So like my fast API video, this video is not about a best practice, but rather a demonstration on how you can do it. Okay, I'm in VS Code and the important script here is the Langchain underscore stream.py. It's quite the same application like the LLM app.py, but again, we use streaming and not uh, make a request and get a response from the API. So, so we get everything token by token. So first we're gonna import the required classes. We used system message, human message, and AI message, message from Langchain. We're gonna use chat open AI. You can of course also use any other model that is capable of streaming tokens. We're gonna use the OpenAI API key. This is why I'm gonna use python.env for that too. We're then gonna create or use the, some uh, stylings. We're gonna use Tailwind and also Days UI to make the UI look a little bit better. And then we're gonna create our app instance. So we're gonna instantiate the fast HTML app and create a system message. So you are a helpful and concise assistant. We create a list of messages and we're gonna instantiate chat OpenAI. Here this time we're gonna use in model quarks stream true. So this will respond with uh, streaming the token and not just return the complete text of the LLM, but stream it token by token. Okay, then we're gonna create some UI functions. So we're gonna create the chat message function here. And based on the type of message, so human message or AI message, we want to display it a little bit different to make it look like a normal chat application that you are normally also used to. We also gonna create a function for the chat input. So we use the input class of fast HTML, which is of type text in this case. And this is where we can type our text that gets sent to OpenAI. Key attribute in this input field is hx swap ob, and this is set to true. This means that in HTMX, we can specify that the content should be swapped so-called out of band. That means it can be inserted in the document object model in a different location than the default target element. This is important because we've got a dynamic list of messages. We then create our root endpoint and here we define our HTML. So we create our HTML body, we create an H1 chatbot demo and here a div with all of our chat messages which get this ID chat list. This is what we also reference. And here we can see this is a form with the chat input. And if we click on the button, then the input here will be sent to OpenAI. We also return a title and this in combination with our page. Okay, now comes an interesting part and that is that in this application, since we use streaming, we're gonna use a web socket. A WebSocket is a communication protocol that provides bidirectional channels over a single TCP connection. And that is ideal for uh, streaming because due to its low latency and persistent connection. So we don't open a connection and close it, but we keep it open the whole time. We've got two arguments in this function, message and send. So the message is the output of chat input and we append that to a human message. So that comes from the user. We append that and send everything to open my eye. Send is the parameter that represents a function that is responsible for sending back messages. So this is responsible for communicating with the front end. And we also get a little helper function or a little print statement for debugging with messages. And now we're gonna use send. This is async, so we use await here and we send back a new div with a chat message. So this will append a new chat message at the end. And we also gonna clear the chat input. Then we gonna append a new AI message with empty content. And why do we need empty content? Because we get back the response token by token and we gonna append to the content, which is currently empty and append token by token to slowly grow the text inside here. We now send back another div. This is responsible for displaying the AI message. So human message and AI message. And now we're gonna use the stream method of the model. And we pass in the system message and all of our messages. And then we iterate over the output of the stream. So we can do it like this for chunk in stream. And we can access the chunk content. And now 
we can take the last message, which is the AI message with empty content and append to that content attribute by adding the chunk value in each iteration. And now we only have to display it. And this can be done by sending back a span element. So this is also HTML. And the content of that span element is that chunk value. And the target here is chat content with that specific ID, which is dynamic for every message. And yeah, then we gonna use async IO and sleep for two milliseconds to make it look a little bit nicer. And then we only use the surf method. So now we can run our application. We are done. Langchain underscore stream dot pi. And this application runs on port 5001. So here it is. You can just type, hello, how are you? And the chatbot will respond. As you can see, the answer here is growing and growing since we are using streaming. If you want to make it slower or faster, you can also change the value here a little bit. And then just type I'm also fine. And now you can see that the application is making the text grow a little bit slower. Okay, that's it. You can see it works, but it's of course not the easiest task to make that work. So if you're not firm in HTML, WebSockets and or HTMX, you may want to use a framework like Streamlit, which makes it far easier to build something like that. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.